So let's now talk about the work function or the threshold frequency. So when we talk about the photoelectric effect, we know that we need to shine light on the surface. And if the light's got enough energy, a photoelectron will escape. So there are two things here that are linked, the work function and the threshold frequency. So the work function, which is called W0, is the minimum amount of energy. So you need to bear in mind that this work function is actually an energy value, okay, measured in joules. The work function is the minimum amount of energy required for an electron to escape from the surface of the metal. So here, this photon beam coming in, it's not got enough energy. There are no electrons escaping. This nice purple or ultraviolet light coming in has got energy above the threshold, so the photoelectrons can escape. So this light is above, got energy above the work function. And every metal that um, you look at has got its own unique work function. You get tables of values of the work function. But the work function is an energy, and energy of light is related to the frequency of light. So the threshold frequency of a metal is the minimum frequency with which the metal must be irradiated. So irradiated just means to shine light on which with the metal must be irradiated to release electrons from the surface of the metal. So sometimes they give you the work function in electron volts. It's an alternate um, form of energy instead of joules. One electron volt is 1,6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So it's a tiny, uh, a tiny uh, number, but when you do this, you actually release quite a few electrons. So yeah, so this is just an alternative energy unit. So if we have a look here from this energy equation, E equals HF, here is my work function, W0, which is the minimum amount of energy for the electron to escape. And it is equal to Planck's constant times the threshold frequency here, F0, which is the minimum frequency with which the metal must be irradiated to release the electrons. So we've just taken E equals HF and been more specific that this is the work function and this is the threshold frequency. So you can see here, here's a table of the different metals with their different work functions, okay, given in electron volts, which can be converted to joules. So when the photon hits the electron in the metal, all the energy is transferred from the photon to the electron. The photon doesn't exist anymore and the electron takes all of its energy and is now called a photoelectron. So then something else interesting happens. If you shine light with an incoming energy, which we call E, okay, if the energy of the incoming light is greater than the work function, which is the minimum amount of energy to emit the electron, then the photoelectron can escape with a maximum velocity. But we know that velocity is corresponding to kinetic energy. So Ek max equals a half mv squared. But what are we talking about here? We are talking about electrons. So this energy that the uh, photoelectron comes out with is a half times the mass of electron times the velocity that it escapes with. So basically what happens is when you shine light on, here comes the light incoming. Here is the work function. The little electron grabs this amount of energy and it's got little fixed packets of energy. It takes in this packet of energy and then it's like, whoa, there's a bit of extra energy here. What do we do with it? Oh, we go away at speed. Okay, so incoming energy is split between how much energy to make the electron pop off the metal and how much speed it can go away with. So it works out like this. If the energy of the incoming photon is less than the threshold frequency or it's less than the work function, okay, the electron's not emitted, the metal just gets hot or it gets shiny, okay. If it is exactly, the incoming energy is exactly the work function, then the electron pops off, okay? But the electron's not got a lot of kinetic energy, 
an electron is negative and if it pops upwards the metal is left with a positive charge and then we know that opposite charges attract and then the electron is going to pop back straight on the metal if the energy of the incoming light is exactly the threshold frequency. But in the third case scenario, if we have very, very high energy photons and the incoming energy is bigger than the work function, then some of the energy is transmitted into popping it off and the rest of it turns it into kinetic energy and the photoelectrons go flying off the metal. So here is that equation again. E equals W0 plus EK max, but we've taken W0 and I mean we've left the W0 and turned it into turned the EK max into a half MV squared, or here is its other alternative, Planck's constant times the threshold frequency plus the kinetic energy. So these are all basically just substituting other things into this expression here, E equals WO plus EK max. WO, HF0, EK max, a half MV squared. Okay. And obviously those are all on your data sheet, those formulas. So here is a little picture of it. Red light, green light, purple light. This is the wavelength, 700 nanometers. Remember to check your units here. 700 nanometers will be 700 times 10 to the negative 9. Here is a shorter wavelength, which means a higher frequency, 550 nanometers. And here is 400 nanometers, which is an even shorter wavelength and a higher frequency. So in comes the red light. The metal just gets hot. In comes the green light on potassium. It needs 2 electron volts to eject an electron. And this green light is 2,25 electron volts. So I've got 2,25 electron volts of energy, which gives me this speed, which you can see is pretty fast, 2,96 times 10 to the power of 5 meters per second. That is very speedy. Okay. But if we then shine the 400 nanometer light on it, which has got an energy of 3,1 electron volts, it only needs two electron volts. I've got 1,1 electron volts left over. Boom, off comes my electron with an energy or a maximum velocity of 6,22 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So it's quite interesting how fast the electrons can come off provided you have met the threshold frequency and there's enough incoming energy. Obviously now here is your data sheet, okay, wave equation, and then um, here is HF equals WO plus a half MV squared equals HFO plus a half MV squared. And some of them have all of this in the bottom depending on how um, late, I think this is like one of the original data sheets and this is one of the later data sheets where they have split it all up so that you don't need to know for yourself what to call all of these different like iterations of the formula. One thing I must warn you, when you use this formula and you say E equals W0 plus EK max, if you do not write the max in the question or the V squared max, if you copy this formula without the word max, you will not get your marks, okay? Please always return to the data sheet and copy the formula 100% exactly off the data sheet. Otherwise, you are just throwing your marks out of the window. See, in the exam, they show you this. They will accept any of those variations of the formula for the marks, but it has to be having the little W0, F0, V squared max or EK max. You can't just be putting E equals W0 plus EK. It will not get you the mark. Okay.